Hi, this is Paul with Equipped. Today we're going to be installing a 2.2 meter long roof rack on a 5th gen 4Runner. Thought we'd start with a little bit of notation on how to take off the factory roof rack. It's not, uh, not too hard to do. Uh, each corner is sealed down here with a little gasket on here and this cap sits on there. And what I, I do is I take a, a screwdriver and I go right under the edge here and I pry outward on this cap and this cap comes off. Now you've noticed there's there's some little clip clip areas, this little guy here and this little guy here. And where that matches up to is that little clip and that little clip here. So what you need to do is to be able to get the, those two clips outward towards me, okay? So once you pop those off, this top will come off. And then once you've got that off, we've got uh, some uh, bolts here. Now you wanna take each one of these out a little bit at a time because there's a backing plate under there with threads in it. Uh, so back off each one of these a little bit at a time and take it off on the four corners and we're going to reuse those threaded mounted points to mount our mounting rail down. So now that we have the factory rack off, we'll take a look down in here and this, will, this shows you what we have when we take the rack off. Down inside here is a threaded mounting point with, uh, with threads down in those guys. And what we have from the factory uh, guys at Ezeon is some hardware. So these are spacers made out of aluminum tubing. And their goal is to set down right over those threaded points there and provide a flat platform across the top of this area. We're putting our mounting rail right on the top of this trim. Okay? So. What we need to do is make sure that these are the same height as the trim next to it. What we found is that depending on the date the thing was made or how it was set up, the height of that washer can vary a little bit from eight millimeters up to 10, depending on the vehicle. And so what we have found is the easiest way to do is to take some type of straight edge. If you lay that across there, you notice there's a gap in between the ruler and the, and the spacer. And then what we do is we add some flat washers to that to shim it up to the right height to get it up to a height that will match out with the, uh, with the top of the trim. So now that we've figured out how many spacers we need, what we do next is we take a um, silicone caulking, clear silicone, and we put a, a dab of silicone all around the hole. And what this does is it allows us to uh, seat the spacer on top, set that down right on top of that silicone. You see now that it's filled with silicone. And we add our spacers. Take these guys and we set them right on top. Our shims right on top of that spacer. And that is ready. So now this is the same height as this. We're gonna do the same to this silicone spacer, shims, and then we'll put the uh, rail down on top. So one thing that we've noticed is that the, the mounting rail comes with an arc in it from the factory. If you notice, it's a pretty good arc. And we've got a space in here between the mounting rail and the roof line. It's, it's just a little bit too much arc in there. So what we're gonna do is take our fancy bending apparatus known as our knee. We're gonna take a little bit of that arc out. Now up front, we want it to arc down a little bit to hold against the roof line, but this is way too much arc in there. Let me bend that a little bit and I'll show you the difference. And I lowered it down just a little bit. If you look under here, there's not as much gap as there was. There's a little bit there, but that's enough for us to compress down on the top of the roof. Much better fit. Much better fit along the roof line. Okay, now what we've done is we've got this mounting rail set in there and you can see our set screws in there holding the mounting rail down. We've got a nice transition across the top of the roof line down through the whole piece of uh, mounting rail. And what we've done is we've separated the feet uh, into two pieces. There's a bottom piece and a top piece that we've attached to the, uh, to the bottom of the rack, and I'll show you that in a minute. But what we've done is we've taken a measurement on the rack and figured out where we need to make each of the feet match up. And we measure off of this back line here for where the hatch is on the vehicle. We want to make sure that this line here, there's a gap in between the rack and the back hatch. So we measure those out and we put the bottom portion of these feet in, uh, sync, uh, in sync with the measurements on the bottom of the rack. And if we go over here, I'll show you what we've done on the rack system. 
So we inverted the rack, we installed the wind deflector here, and we installed the top portion of the foot in each of the locations on the top of the, the platform here. Well, excuse me, the bottom of the platform. And we tighten these nuts down just enough to give us some moving uh, adjustability, but uh, loose enough that it'll move, but tight enough that we don't have to sit underneath the rack and tighten those all down by hand in an awkward position. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this platform and we are going to turn it right side up and put it on top of the, tr of the truck and line it up with the feet bottom. Here we go. Now we got the platform up here. Now there's a couple things we're gonna look at here. See how close we made that? You see how the back of that lines up with that right there? That is where we wanna start off of there. Each foot comes down and meets each one of the bottoms right here. See that? So we'll bring this down a little bit. We'll add our, our hardware there. And we, uh, we tighten these little guys here down a little bit. Makes it easier to mount those. This will adjust a little bit. You notice how each one of the feet are floating on the top of those. What we want to do is make sure that, that the, the rack is square in there. Okay? So what we do is we measure off of right here out to here on both sides and make sure that that measurement is the same, both front and at the back of the rack. Put the hardware in here, tighten it all down, and you're good to go. So here we are. We've gone and put the, uh, the hardware in there. We've tightened down the little screws on the bottom right down in here. All of this hardware is tightened. We've tightened the bolts up underneath here that hold it to the platform. If you notice, that foot is pretty much high. This one's in the middle. This one is as low as it can be. And the next one's medium and high. And what that does is that creates a flat platform on a arced roof line. This is the 1400 by 2.2 meter rack on a 200 series and it turned out phenomenal. Here's the back edge, nice and clean and clear, all squared up and good to go. Cheers.